Part of the pleasure of reading about realistically drawn characters is that you can reflect on the issue of making mistakes, um, perhaps retrospectively, um, but nonetheless, it widens your field of experience, it widens your sense of what other people are like or may be inclined to do under certain circumstances. The novel is a kind of post-Renaissance phenomenon. The print, the invention, and the proliferation of printing presses and cheap printing uh, in the same period meant that you had a lot of newly literate people who didn't want to hear about um, the heroes and gods of classical mythology, uh, not interested in Achilles and Hector and not interested in characters from, say, medieval romance, like King Arthur. What these new readers, it's a kind of new democratic reading audience, um, wanted to read about life, life as they knew it. Um, and there's a kind of nitty gritty uh, realism to especially early English novels that is absolutely not there before in the literary tradition. It's a kind of transition from a world of often authoritarian belief, sort of patriarchal or religious, um, or um, uh, a sort of aesthetic in the, in the sort of neoclassical sense that you, you were, it was felt that you were supposed to imitate the ancients, uh, but that is being left behind um, and by the 18th century, that is when the novel in English is it's sort of up and rolling at that point. <music> Women very rapidly are drawn in the 18th century into the world of the novel both as readers, as writers. It's related to literacy and a sort of newly enfranchised middle-class female readership um, who want some documentation of their own uh, domestic lives, family life, um, threats, the courtship plot, uh, everything one thinks about, say, with Jane Austen. Um, life as it is lived within an economic and social context, how that might differ for a woman, a man, uh, uh, all of those themes that we associate with sort of modern sensibility. Works of the past two centuries, three centuries, are becoming ever more foreign to students in particular, uh, but to culture at large. Um, I think we're living in uh, a somewhat post-literate age where many, many people don't read very much at all, certainly not long novels, certainly not old novels. Part of one's task is that of an archaeologist, in a way, uh, or a historian, to reconstruct the cultural context because it's hugely valuable uh, to know where, um, uh, you know, things come from, systems of decorum and beliefs about, say, female sexuality. Uh, how did all these things get started? If you can read and understand and say something not only sensible but maybe even remarkable about 
a novel, whether it's Jane Austen's or whether we're talking about a Virginia Woolf novel or Tolstoy or whomever, and I don't confine this at all to simply British or English language fiction, if you can do that, if you master that, there is an intellectual discipline involved and um, part of it is uh, your language skills will improve immeasurably. Mm -hmm.